Okay, Rory said, uh, how do you come up with the names of the places and the planets where your battles and the books take place, like Fortis Binary and Arenberg? Um, they, um, some of them, well, all sorts of different places, actually. There's no particular formula for it. Sometimes I invent them, because it's a word that I think sounds good. Sometimes they are real places or real words that I've adapted. Sometimes they are like ones, but inspired, and I've moved a real word around a bit. And some of them have, uh, like Arenberg itself, have got Greek or Latin words in them that actually suggest uh, what what it is that we're dealing with. Um, so, uh, Uranus, I think, is the Greek god of the sky, or... pretty sure. Pretty sure. Could be completely wrong there. I'm sure I picked it for some reason like that, and of course Arenberg is, is on Fantine, which is sky-related. Um, so, no particular formula, but loads of different ways of doing it. Christopher Duane said, Hello, Dan. Uh, how do you think of the names? Oh, well, there you go. I've, I've almost asked that already. The names... Uh, slightly different. Um, they're much more of an invention. I'll invent names, or if I hear a good name, it'll go in my notebook, which is still never, never far away. Names go in there. Use them all the time. Um, names also fall into naming conventions after a while. So, for instance, Tanith characters will always get the same sorts of names. There are names that come along. And I think, well, that couldn't possibly be a Tanith character. That couldn't possibly uh, be a um, uh, a Vergast or whatever it is, that there, there, there are certain things that sound right or sound wrong and I know where they fit. Um, I also, nowadays, as many of you I'm sure will know from conventions, I collect names. I always have a piece of paper next to me when I'm signing at a game, Big Games Day. And you, uh, I invite people just to write their names down if they want a chance to appear in my book. It's not like it's some kind of competition. But if people write down the names and I'm stuck for names and I look on the list and think, that's a great name, I'll use that. Usually we talk about it as the cannon fodder list because they're names of people, you know, will you like, would you like to die as as a you know, third infantry man from the left in one of my books. But every now and then somebody comes along. In fact, and I won't spoil it for the person involved, um, I met them several times in France. Uh, they're actually quite a major character in um, uh, Prospero Burns, so uh, I hope you enjoy that. You're a space wolf, mate. <coughs> Just in case you didn't know. Uh, Justin said, will we ever see another Iron Snakes or Space Marine work 40k, not 30k? Well, I mentioned Iron Snakes as well. Um, it took me so long to write, get around to writing Space Marines, and now I feel quite confident about it. And I'm just, I have to say, I have a hankering, goodness only knows when this would happen, but I do have a hankering for writing a straight 40k Space Marine story, um, much as I'd like to write some more Iron Snakes, but to actually pick one of the key uh, Codex chapters. Uh, obviously I wouldn't touch the Ultramarines, because that's Graham's, um, and, and other, other chapters belong to other people, but there are several there that I think are crying out for a... For a, for a stonkingly good contemporary football contemporary 40k novel uh, so maybe who knows uh, I think you could execute a chaplain librarian or an apothecary making them the main characters since you did a really good job with Petrov thank you very much Justin it's Alex again hello it's Alex again Mr Ravnett when, you'll be, when will you be working with Mike Lee again on new Malice stories yes I don't know when they're coming out because it depends when, when Mike is free again but we had a blast doing that and we will do some more again um, uh, Christopher Meyer said, I understand that you're more of a sci-fi than fantasy writer, but we still need to wrap up to Dark Blade. Well, that's what you're going to get. Um, I write more science fiction than fantasy, mainly because there's a bigger market for science fiction and fantasy. 40k is, is generally more popular than Warhammer, in terms of, certainly in terms of the fiction. But I love writing fantasy. Uh, Triumph. If you want to see me writing fantasy, but then buy Triumph in October. That's, that's fantasy. Uh, now, Stuart said, Dan, after having had a hand in everything from Transformers to Mr. Men, I wonder if there's a property you'd like to work on. Uh, goodness me. The only two key properties I can think of in the world that I've never had anything to do with at all are The Simpsons and Star Wars. I do like Star Wars a lot. I'd love to have a go at something for there, I suppose. Um, I think it's more a case of you know the characters that I have a yearning to write. Some of the uh, some of the DC characters I've always I've, I think Andy and I, for instance, could do a great job with uh, with Wonder Woman or Green Lantern. And at uh, uh, at Marvel, well, the characters like Thor have always appealed enormously. So uh, so I hope that answers the question. Uh, Matthew Tomcat Churchill said, "You've written for several different franchises down the years. Do you find it how to have been a prior fan of what you're writing for? Is it better to approach work with a clean slate? Both." Really, uh, I've written some things, I suppose, like Star Trek and Doctor Who, filled with an enormous enthusiasm for it, and, and just the, the thrill of actually writing something I like that much. I think the same came, comes through with some of the Marvel characters I've written, you know, writing, uh, writing something like Star-Lord or, or, or Warlock, and, you know, brilliant. 
Um, but every now and then when you come across something that you've, you've perhaps not engaged with in the same sort of way and you discover how wonderful they are. A good case in point, again, from, from Marvel point of view, is that we've used the Inhumans in the War of Kings. Very, very important characters. Now, I know who the Inhumans are and I could explain how they work, but I've never thought about them. And they've never been a huge favourite of mine, uh, but get, getting to terms with them uh, was, was brilliant. And now I, I, you know, I can't get enough of them as characters. So we're going to do another Inhumans miniseries because they're just, just, uh, just fantastic characters. Uh, are there any shows or characters that you'd like to write about that you haven't worked on yet? I think we sort of touched on that before, but, but, um, but yes, there's always, always things. Uh, what is the name of the Princeps they, the squad that was technically full of civilians whose names I can't remember, I've left my copy out, says Alex, found in Titanicus? Uh, I don't think I ever named him. I don't believe I ever named him. Um, don't know. Um, he also asks, are there going to be any one-off books dealing with the Unification Wars, or dare I say, a series based during the Dark Age of Technology? Well, that's very interesting. I don't think we touch either of those subjects until we've dealt with Horus Heresy properly. Uh, and that's a very major ongoing project, but there will come a point, I guess, where that is done and we need to look to something else. I imagine moving ahead chronologically uh, would be the way to go. Um, so there are as many major historical events, obviously, that happen between 30k and 40k. But going back to the Unification Wars, that's very cool, very interesting. Dark Age of Technology, I hadn't even thought of that, that's, that's even cooler. I'll bring it up with the powers that be. Rob said, do you write action sequences on the fly, or choreograph them in my head first? Choreograph them in my head, I leap from sofa to sofa, swinging uh, replica weapons. Um, um, all sorts of different things, depending on what it is. Sometimes it's entirely in my head, sometimes I've imagined it first. Sometimes an action sequence is based around some particularly vivid image I have, I think, or I've got, you know, I've got to work up to that particular thing where he goes through the window or, or whatever. Uh, sometimes I do sad though it may seem, stand up and sort of work out how somebody would work in relation to somebody else. Uh, I do know a lot of comic book writers, back in the 70s, the X-Men was plotted in the in the offices of Marvel, where they did literally leap around the room working out how Wolverine would get under Colossus's garden, you know, and, and then they'd do that and they'd throw cushions at each other and make... And, oh, what a great job that must have been. Um, uh, and I know some comic book writers and artists choreograph their action sequences using action figures, uh, which is quite clever. I haven't got that stage yet. Um, it's like a movie in my head most of the time and sometimes I have to write quick notes down so I can remember the sequence probably writing comics helps because I'm used to used to breaking down a fight into panel, 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 panel and so that's the sort of way I deliver it in the script you know, a novel am I making sense still? Uh, and did any particular books teach you how to write action sequences or give you insights into how to stage these scenes effectively? Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, by any particular books, I'm not, I don't know whether you mean discovered whilst I was writing a book of my own, or reading a book and thinking, oh gosh, that's a brilliant way of doing it. A um, little bit of both. Um, can't think of a good example. If I do think of one, I'll come back to that. Um, but I think comics have a, have a very big, uh, a lot to answer for. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes the nine pages of questions that everyone was kind enough to send me. So thank you very much. I hope I've answered everything. If I've missed you off, I do apologise. Uh, it was not my intention. And if I've not answered your question fully enough, again, I apologise. This isn't the last time we're going to do this. Um, there will be more opportunities for questions and more opportunities for me to sit and talk at you. Um, and who knows, at some point I might sit down here with the first chapter of uh, Triumph and actually read you a bedtime story. How does that sound? All right. Thank you very much. See you soon.